Greetings, beloved, in the name of the Most High, Yeshua. Well, I will say this, that the last podcast, the last transmission that you heard from me, looks like it was pretty accurate. I don't just want to say something for the sake of having a show or just saying something. It's 3.13 a.m. East Coast time. My location, our location, at this hour, we're under rain and thunderstorms on the outer banks of North Carolina, where we spent a week, and it's... Oh my, there's a wind. And it's raining. We've had every kind of weather, from hot, muggy, to now pouring rain. Uh, the beach is secluded, and the only way here is through by a 4x4. Four four. And there are wild horses. And I felt in this experience that I just wanted to see wild horses on the beach one time. And I, I then heard the story about these wild horses, that these wild horses were thrown off the ships, some of which, you know, there are lots of shipwrecks out there. And uh, the Spanish came with their horses, and they, uh, as, the, as the ships went aground, they tried to attract them to uh, make them run aground, and then they would loot the, the ships. So these horses got loose. There's also some ponies somewhere around here that are also wild that uh, are preserved. Anyway, so here are these horses from Europe. They took root here and survived in the area, and now they're wild, completely feral in the sense that they don't acknowledge humans. Look, you can't go up to them and feed them. You can't, they, 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 uh, they don't respond like horses you, you might find that are domesticated, where the horse becomes your friend. They're more like dolphins, you know, wild animals. People think dolphins are so cute until finally they try to relate to one of the dolphins. You know, go up to the dolphin. The dolphin does not treat you like Flipper. He doesn't treat you like SeaWorld. The dolphin is indifferent to you because the dolphin is wild. He may not regard you at all. And uh, unless you get co close to the kids, then a big bull dolphin will come along and uh, make sure that you understand not to go one more step further toward the kids. So that's it. And the same thing with the horses. You get close to the colt, and you, you may have a stallion in your face rearing up or trying to kick you, which is why you have to stay away from them. They're wild. But why do I like them? Because they're wild, and they're on the beach and in this area. They wander through people's yards, uh, which is kind of like sand dunes and little grass and whatnot. Um, there's no way down here but, a, like I say, a four-wheel drive, and you have to drive on the, on the sand to get here. So you drive on the sand, and you drive past all these horses. And it just reminded me, the whole experience, you know, just reminded me of what was lost, what's gone, of what America was, and what America no longer is because of these panty waist um, intellectual snobs that, uh, that seek to regulate everything because they're afraid that someone might have an original thought. I mean, I live in this world dominated by a machine that, that, that surveils and, and uh, doesn't understand what faith is, doesn't understand what, uh, what God means, doesn't understand uh, a lot of things. And so I now want to give you a scripture. 
Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. I think, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's just that simple. And therefore, certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, but left... Uh, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Do you recall that? In other words, that which he saved, he allowed to be destroyed. That which he made, he will allow to be hurt. The people feel helpless because of the uh, the toxic spraying going on in the air. Uh, the people of the Lord will not be affected. Period. This is a word from the Lord. I know it's ugly, and I know people around you may die of cancer, but you won't. I don't know why we weren't sharing this word before, but it was because I didn't understand it. The Lord said, let me worry about the chemtrails. Most people are so dumbed down in this country, they have no idea what we're talking about. No idea uh, what the truth is. But I'll just say this. The chemtrails are as the word of the Lord is. There's no poison that's going to affect you. There's no chemtrail that will affect you. If you belong to God, 10,000 may fall to the left, 10,000 may fall to the right, but you won't fall. You're here to be a witness. You're here to witness the satanic uh, politicians and the, and, the, and the mind control programming attempts and the uh, incredible amounts of surveillance these pathetic people um, think that somehow with all the cameras and with all the, the, uh, the, the with all that uh, technology has to bear that somehow they can see into one's soul. My friends, they cannot see into your soul. They do not see into your soul. And furthermore, they will not be able to surveil the Holy Spirit in you. Of course, this is ridiculous seeing all these objects and devices that can't penetrate one centimeter of the spirit, that cannot measure one iota of spirit, that can't see one thing of spirit. But we know from the persecution of Christians in America, which, hallelujah, thank God that came, we predicted it would come. Many others did as well. We were all given an accurate word by the Lord, amen, that persecution would come to America and we would see it back when we when we prophesied, all of us, we, it looked impossible, didn't it? Remember, put yourself back in that time, 2001, 2000, 2003, 2004 even. Did not look like there would be Christian persecution. Indeed, the Chinese underground church would pray that persecution would come to America and their prayer was answered, yes. I would ask the Lord, Lord, why in America are these Christians not persecuted? Since all over the world, to be a Christian is a hard walk. It's a hard road. It's a road of isolation, you know, it's because you have to understand that modern society as it is, is extremely suspicious of Christians, as you saw with the IRS probe, uh, that Christian, they even want to know, what are you praying about? They, they don't understand it. They don't understand a man of faith. They don't understand a woman of faith. They don't understand a family that prays. They don't understand why it's important. They just know that they feel uncomfortable about it and they feel they have to go stop it. Hence persecution. 
If you don't stop it, we'll throw you in jail. If you don't stop it, we'll execute you. If you don't, you know, or whatever. We'll, 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 life will go very hard for you if you make a public display. I had a dream last night that I was arrested for um, praying in a park. You know, leading some, some people in prayer. And, you know, just like four or five people, a little prayer circle, you know. And, um, and then I was in front of the uh, judge. And uh, he just said, what are you... I think this was what the Lord wants me to be. I think he wants us all to pray more. I think I, this last week I partied more and prayed less. But I prayed all night every night sometimes. Anyway, I was in front of the judge and, he, and he's trying to understand and asking me questions about why do you feel a need to make a public spectacle. And I said, Your Honor, I'm not trying to make a public spectacle. I'm just, I am who I am. I'm, I'm Zeph, you know? And Zeph is just, everything's about the Lord. I mean, that's just my whole waking day. There's, I, what can I do? It's just, you know, I'm, I just am me. And I pray, and I walk, and I talk, and I eat, and I make mistakes, and I'm sorry, but I pray. And, you know, and something pops up spontaneously in a park, in an office building, in an elevator, on the street. Um, I'm there. It's just the most natural thing for me to do. It's just that's who I am. And then uh, it was like, well, let's see how you are after 30 days. <laughs> it's like, well, that's, you know, and again, if you get 30 days in jail, then what, what is it? What happens there? Uh, prayer, sharing the word, um, uh, praising the Lord. I, I, you know, that's what they did in the old days. And it just seems like I can't think of anything else to do. You understand? I, I used to have all this agenda of things I wanted to do. Like, I mean, I have a whole list of things I do. I mean, it's, it's you know... But, um, you know, mainly it just kind of revolves around sound, and communication, uh, the studio, you know, mixing music, in which a lot of it is also praising God. And, um, or it's about some true thing, it's about truth, which music today is not about truth. We, I, I, when I travel, I, at times I... Uh, We'll flip the stations around, the pop stations and rock stations, and I'll just survey, you know. And although, you know, I hit the classic rock station here, and, and I was listening to some of the mixes, you know, because I could hear, you know, I was just really, I mean, technical stuff. I was listening for how much reverb they would put on the vocals, and I, and I realized I was listening to a song by Kansas, Carry On My Wayward Son. And um, there was a line where... Uh, the singer, the lead singer, goes really high, and, and I just was amazed how much reverb they, they didn't need to really. I mean, they're so saturated that it almost sounded like he, he, he was disappearing. Um, and sometimes they'll do that to, when they're not quite sure uh, that that vocal is going to be pulled off when it, at maximum. Uh. Anyway, I was amazed how I, I, I thought, yeah, I'd never heard that before. And now I hear it. It's amazing how the Lord has given us ears. Anyway, um, I peruse these stations, and I'm listening to the mixes, and, and many of which are, are brilliant. And I'm thinking, gee, to them, the whole thing revolves around those mixes. It all revolves around these Lyrics that don't cry, quite rise up to the level of the Word of God, you know, that, that attempt at make an attempt at truth of, you know, but uh, but everything is in carnal terms, you know, and in, in rock and roll, it's everything is in conditional terms. It all has very terrestrial. It's very, very much for earth dwellers, you know, not not for people that want to soar in the spirit, or not for people who have a spiritual life, you know, really, and then the Christian station, and then I couldn't stand that. That really turned me off. At least rock, rock I like, you know, but the Christian station 
terrible. So I listened to con- contemporary Christian. Awful. Just awful. It's almost like when I was a kid being forced to listen to Lawrence Welk by my grandparents. You know, it's the most awful thing. A, torture to the ears. And then, you know, uh, well, it's not torture. The, you, you know, the talent's there and they sing about God. What is it then? Well, the very thing that their surveillance can't touch is the very thing I'm talking about. My spirit is disturbed. It, 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 it feels like there's a, a devil in the room, in that, in that recording room. And it's just like, and then it feels like there's a devil at the station. And then it, it, it feels like there's... A, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, so what's the point of, you know, I was asking the Lord, you know, what's the point of uh, Christian music? What's the point of Obama saying he's a Christian and quoting scripture? What, what is, this is worse than saying I love Satan. And so I was very disturbed by that, as I always am. And, I, and then, then the next part is, you could have been one of them. You know, I could have been mixing behind a giant console. You know, involved in big bands. Or whatever. But that's not the path that uh, the Spirit took me in. Well, God gave me ears. He caught me. I eventually got to, 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 to mixing and stuff. I got to making music. It's, it's no big deal. Didn't want to sell my soul for it. It didn't, and my soul, and, and the Lord, Lord owns my soul. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, without him, I wouldn't be here. He protected me when I was a child. He um, saved and rescued me time and time again. And as I just said here in Scripture, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And I have to watch this because, uh, well, left on my own for any period of time, I'm eventually going back to the Lord saying, Lord, how come it hurts so much? How come it hurts knowing, if, you know, knowing everything, you know? I mean, when I say everything, I put it in quotes. It doesn't mean I know everything, but I know so much that if I was just left on my own, I would probably just die of sorrow for how much I know. I know so much, you know, and I know so many things that I wish I didn't know. But going back to innocence is no, you know, my eyes are wide open. I see what they see. And then I've got to go back to the Lord and I have to say, Lord, how in the world can somebody see what they see, what I've seen that they see, and keep a straight fa- how can they keep from killing themselves and it's like there's a there's a there's not just a veil over their eyes there is a shield around their hearts of coldness of darkness they don't feel anything about somebody else's pain and suffering they only do it to score political points whether it's you know in politics or not in, in, anywhere in life you know, they become ruthless and cold and calculating and cunning. And they, they learn street smarts. And they learn, you know, you got to pay this to get that. I give you this, you give me that. I give you this, you give me that. And everything's a negotiation as they claw their way out of the snake pit and up to the top of rock and roll, up to the top of, top of politics, up to the top of what, uh, exchange. Thank you. Up to the top of politics, up to the top of uh, the corporate ladder, up to the top of the legal profession, up to the top of doctors, up to the top of whatever. They claw their way up out of the snake pit, pull themselves up by their bootstraps, and everything has to do with that success and that result. But they're not who they were when they get there. They're somebody else. The wife says, I don't recognize my husband. We met in college and I don't know this man that I'm cohabitating with. 
The man says about his wife, since women are really more on, on the way up the, in the success route to these days, and then men, men, it's men's jobs to be, uh, well, to be snipped, to be made into eunuchs, and to be uh, sent home to be boys, you know, to not be men. Women uh, have taken the reins, and the, the men are kind of like the kids now. They're like the children. They, they, uh, they're just another big kid. This is the, the way of the world. This is what happened. This is what you get when you put the people that you have in leadership. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get all the way to the point of, you know, the Nazis marching up and down the street with the Gestapo and, uh, you know, interrogations and the Stasi secret police. And but you want it, you get it. Hey, you get what you deserve. I'm not part of it. No believer is. And that makes them nervous. We don't have skin in the game. At all. We're not in your game. We see you running around with your little cameras and your little lights and your, your, your pointed questions and your, your Keystone Cop IRS. And, and I mean, I, if it wasn't so sad, I would just die laughing. <laughs> to think that you people take yourselves so seriously that somehow you think that your job is important, that you score political points by... Uh, finding out what people pray about and then denying them a five... You know what? I, if I were you, IRS, I would deny everyone 501c3 status. All Christians deny them because that right there... You, you know, here's the big joke that's missing from all this. 501c3 or c4 status is no thing that a Christian should want. Therefore, the IRS or whoever grants that permission should actually force the Christian to be 501c3. I mean, technically, to, in terms of spiritual warfare. But because, I mean, everyone seems dumb. The people seeking 501c3, I don't trust them. They say they're Christian. I don't know if they're brethren or not. Do you? The people being denied 501c3 are being given a gift, but they complain. They ain't my brethren. Are you? Huh? Are they your brethren? 501c3 people? To me, they're the same as the children of the obelisk. Give me a break. Yeah, it's not Obama. Obama, there's hundreds and millions of Obamas running around. They're just children of the obelisk. They're children of Satan. They belong to him. That they're, you know, you'll recognize them by their fruits, just like you'll recognize the, the people of Yahweh, Jesus Christ. You'll recognize your own by their fruits. By their, by their fruits, you shall know them. And by their fruits, you, sh you shall know them. I, I can't believe how, how uh, okay, we're going to just keep on, we're going to keep on rolling here. And you don't, you don't think I'm going to come back to this certain things, but uh, the Lord said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and, w and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. This is, these are Jesus' words. Who is Jesus? Let's just get back to that now before we go back to the, um, to the Lord destroying that. Yes, the Lord, I said the Lord will destroy that to which he saved. He will destroy that which he lifted up. He will destroy that which he helped to build. He will destroy that which he created if there is disobedience by his people that would benefit from it. He will take it away. The Lord gives, he takes. He, he gives, you disobey, he takes. He gives, you do your own thing, he takes. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. This is the identity of Jesus. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty, capital A. I, Jesus Christ, am the Almighty. Okay? It's Revelation 1, verse 8. I, the identity of Jesus Christ is, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and was and which is to come, saith the Almighty. Saith the Almighty. And these words are in red in this version. I'm not sure what version I have. I've got a King James version, I guess. Okay. Well, look. It doesn't seem like it, though. 
I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, saith the Lord, in Ren, which is and which was and which is to come, comma, the capital A, Almighty. I, Jesus Christ, am the beginning and the end, which was, which is, and which is to come. In other words, I am all things. I am, I am. The Almighty. I don't know how in the world that a person could possibly miss the identity of Jesus as spoken in the word. Words that are so powerful and so otherworldly, the way they're presented here, as to defy human authorship completely. Because my spirit recognizes that comes directly from the kingdom of God to me. You see, my friends, that, <laughs> that is the thing that they really, really just don't understand. The idea that there's a God and that we must, you know, there's nothing new. Richard Wormbrand, you remember him? He was martyred for Christ. You know, I mean, he wasn't made into a martyr, meaning dead, but I mean, you know, as a prisoner, he was to be, you know, I, I should say tortured, let me, sorry, tortured for Christ. And he, and he had a uh, voice of the martyr's ministry. He came to America and was horrified. There was no persecution. He was like, this is America. What do you, huh? You know, I couldn't believe it. Well, Mr. Pastor Wormbrand, you now have your, if you were alive today, you would be at peace knowing that, you know, no, America didn't get away with it, sir. I can report to you. I don't know if you could hear me. Probably not. But um, uh, you would not be surprised today should you fly into America. Should you fly into America, you'd be saying, you and Dimitri Dudeman and whoever else, who were horrified by what they saw from coming here from abroad, you would come here and you would say yes. And out of this chaos and this persecution that we have today, which, was, um, which is spearheaded by Barack Hussein Obama, who, like Adolf Hitler, claimed to be a Christian. Um, I, I shouldn't even mention Adolf Hitler. There's, isn't there some rule out there? If you mention that, you blow your whole argument. Or like Stalin, I don't know, what does it matter? You know, he's just, he's just a dime a dozen, this guy. A thug is a thug is a thug, you know? It, you, you, you know, are we surprised that there are thugs in, uh, it's really, Obama's really a Valerie Jarrett puppet, so she's a th the thug. But they all come out of the same revolutionary group of Bill Ayers and, you know, the Weather Underground and, you know, they, they already talked about the idea that they were going to have to kill at least 25 million people in America. This is back in those days. Are people that just couldn't be retrained. It's like, and the thing about a, a Christian, a man or woman of faith, is they cannot be... Can you be trained? Once your eyes are open, can you go back? No. Anyway, so... The persecution from the IRS, the persecution from the government by people who quote scripture when they go to funerals is, is wonderful. It's wonderful. Now, you have to understand that the Lord destroys that which he saves. The Lord destroys that which he builds. The Lord will, will allow people uh, you know, the, the, the GMO foods, the, the GMO is a plague upon the earth. He'll allow a plague upon the earth and people to be sickened by the plague and many to die, at least a third of the population. He will allow those things. He is the Lord and the people get what they deserve. In other words, uh, the people have become evil. The people being persecuted for their request for 501c3 they're deluded, they're ignorant. Why would you want to, if you, if you really belong to the Lord, why would you want to make a deal with the state, which is Lucifer? Why would you want to make a deal with the, with the fallen angel? 
there's no deal to be made there. It just it means it means you're compromised. Denying you 501c3 or 4 status is absolutely a gift to you, but you can't see it. You feel that that's persecution. That's not persecution. Persecution is when they force you to be 501c3 or throw you in jail. That's persecution. Anyway, I can't keep repeating that because those people, that category of, of Christian, can't hear me. They just have no ears. I've been speaking the same message to the churches from the very beginning. I can tell the churches without, without fail that you churches are being gifted by the Lord with persecution. And if they decide that they're going to strip some of you of 501c3, is that not a gift? Because having a 501c3 is taking an oath to the state that you worship the devil, not the Lord. And that you must all be conformed to the world, not the way of God. Those conformed to the way of God, the world hates because, and, and wants to find a legal way to put them to death, because their idea of utopia is a world without the children of Yahweh. Now we've gone over and over this. A world without the children of Yahweh. A, a world without people of faith. A world without lambs. A world without... God, a world without people of God. And that's their whole goal. It's not about conservatives. It's not about uh, uh, Republicans. It's about the people of God. And they, they, what they try to do is lump it in with all those categories. But it's really those people they want. And they want the Jews too. You might have noticed. So... And, you know, I, I recognize that there are many Jews who aren't Jews. In other words, there are many people that are Jews because they grew up in a Jewish family or whatever, but they have no faith. You know, just like there's many Christians, they grow up, they go to church, they have no faith. You know, so, that, so but, but what I mean is people of faith. And I suppose um, we could, you know, I don't want to get lost in terms, but I mean, ultimately, the seed of Abraham are the believers in Jesus Christ, period. Absolutely. But you can't believe in Jesus Christ unless the Lord shows you that. And he says that he, he's going to show different people at different times. Like the Jews, he's going to wait till the end of time to, to pull his remnant from the Jewish people. But I'm just saying in a general way, what they want to do is they want a world without you in it. They want a world with... This is what it's really all about. They, they don't want anyone of faith. They don't understand. It scares the heck out of them. And they want to either round them up, and they know they can't be retrained. There's another thing. They, they, they feel it's child abuse to have children being taught the word or homeschooled and being taught about the Lord Jesus, because the whole point of school is to beat that out of them. That's why Obama, being that he's a child of Satan, is... No, I, I don't... I understand. He, he, look, he was a prodigal, but he... he um, Looks like he's not coming home anytime soon. He says he spends a lot of time in scripture and prayer when things aren't going well. And then he allows the IRS to persecute Christians. Well, which is it? Right? He's, he's conflicted. Oh, I pray for him all the time. And, you know, for him to, to be a a good leader and you know I pray for the leaders to, to do the right thing and but that which the Lord has built he will destroy so you have to understand something here the Lord destroys uh, good things and there's it's like a test there are many Christians that say how can you destroy that Lord we're trying to build that we're trying to preserve America there's a lot of people here that are of faith well Prophetically, then, you are the witnesses. You remnant, you people of faith, are the witnesses of God's moving. Well, he'll protect you. He, I already told you, the whole thing from the sky, okay? The chemtrails, 10,000 to the left, 10,000 to the right. Thought I wouldn't come back to that, huh? And what happens? You don't get sick. Don't you understand how biblical that is? 
And there are many things like that. You must just have faith and stop worrying. Why are you worrying, child of God? Why are you worrying? You belong to him, then why are you worrying? You're worried about, will your kids ever get... Well, you know what? It's up to the Lord and your kids and, and that relationship. It's not up to you. You've exposed them to it? Okay, it's a, look, it's up to him. He doesn't take every kid. In the end, he's going to win in the sense of there will be justice, there will be goodness, there will be only the kingdom. There isn't some alternative rebellious thing going on. But if you belong to that alternative rebellious thing, then anything of God you must stand against. So you must be for human sacrifice, immorality, uh, you know, war, abortion, all the the agenda of pretty much the left and many on the quote right again it's got nothing to do with politics, uh, and the agenda being pushed through. I mean, what do you think God would look at America that kills children and and with no guilt and no shame uh, under the color of law and and you just going, okay, I guess the Lord's going to smack this place down. Yes, because you are the witness. There is no way America can stand with the thorn in its side of sacrificing. And now we find out that they, they were relishing in killing these babies and getting them outside the womb. It was even more fun for them to, to, to snap their spines and their necks and twist their head off. These are just brutal murderers. And you know to have this an ongoing thing, it's like, well, we have this ongoing sacrifice to our Lord because we know he exists so that um, we don't have to, you know, be killing people in the streets. It's, it's a gift. We sacrifice these babies and do it under the color of law, and then the, the people prosper. And I kid you not, that's what, that's what the, the honchos think. They, well, they'll never say that, but I mean, if you could get them to admit that they serve, you know, Satan, which is what they do, they will admit that's the reason there's human sacrifice. Because... There's no civilization that has ever uh, existed. You know, it's all based on the pyramid, on the obelisk. If there's an obelisk, uh, that's the, the center point of, of Washington, D.C., where the leadership is, then they will obey the obelisk. The obelisk, seen around the world and seen in, certainly seen in um, um, Saudi Arabia uh, and, and, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the Islamic world, the obelisk is called Satan. The pyramid is, you know, for sacrificial cults. Thousands of them around the world. They're all intertwined with the soul and scalping thereof. And they're all intertwined with what you call the aliens and the, um, you know, the whole Babylonian or mystery Babylon system, which is based on that. The whole world is based on that, and most of the people belong to that. Their souls are tethered to the pyramid. And um, that's basically the, the civilization that is in front of you now. You're here to be witnesses. You were born to be a witness. You are living in a... In a as, your, as your scales are taken off your eyes, you're seeing just what was here already when you were born and before you were born it was the same that's why I don't, you don't get all up tight about like is this the end times that the end times well it's worse now than it's ever been it's not worse now it's worse, it was worse in 1965 than it, was today, than it is today okay it was worse then than it is today I mean, you know, but it was about the same um how you could think anything else just means you weren't around then. I was around then, and I can tell you it's about the same. Uh, well, worse because they proclaim God is dead. In the, in the, and I remember in, on the cover of Time magazine, and uh, you know, there was the, 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 you know, the aftermath of JFK assassination, Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, um, 
just thug mafia politics everywhere you go. Lyndon Johnson was thug mafia politics. Uh, he, he was worse than Obama. Worse, much worse. He needed lots of blood, hence the Vietnam War. It was, it, it was a, it, incredible uh, how evil it was. And of course, that's where the British invasion of rock and roll... Most of these people don't even know what rock and roll is, how it's mind control. They don't even get that. We all like the musicianship. We all like music and everything. We try to steer it our own direction. But I mean, the whole point of the British invasion was to corrupt the, the United States from within and uh, to soften it up for the, quote, New World Order. That's, that's why I say, you know, if you want to sue somebody, you would do very well to start suing people like Paul McCartney or, you know, if, you, if, if, if it's like a court of law where you could say, well, why is it the way it is? We should sue somebody. Well, you can sue the record industry because they were all participating with the uh, military-industrial complex to get control of your mind and your soul, ultimately. That was the hippie movement, free concerts, free love, all of it. And all these artists got freaked out because being an artist means you go for the truth. So when the artists start waking up, like the, 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 the John Lennons or the, the, the various people that wake up, Jim Morris and any of these guys, they start seeing that they were duped, okay? That they were just tools. And then they start rebelling against that, and then they wind up dead. Okay? Because they already made a deal with the devil, so then they, try, they start reneging on the contract because a real artist is going to go for truth, right? And then they wind up being dead by some circumstance. It doesn't matter who you talk, the 27-year-old thing, that's all basically the devil. That's all Satan. That's all him collecting. Collecting on that contract. You want to make a contract with the devil? It'll take you just two seconds. But you have to believe. He, you have to believe that the devil's your daddy and there is no other daddy. If you don't believe that, then you ain't really going there. If you believe that the Lord is the daddy and the devil's the second, second tier, you know, imposter, then basically you're never going to be uh, revered in the world of Satan. You're just going to be at, the, at best a janitor and, the, in, you know, uh. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was some guy saying, you know, that, that he objected that I would finance my own podcast and say you're just a you're just a rich blowhard, you know, lording it over everybody or some some such like that. And it was kind of like, oh, would you rather I be under the? Uh, auspices of somebody's control and money so that, uh, so that I would be able to, then I'd have to say what, or how about this? Do you now take issue with the fact that uh, I'm not accepting donations? And so therefore, I'm not really beholden to those donors, am I? Or would you rather have me just pay for it out of pocket and have my own blog and say what I want? And you don't have to be rich to have a, a, an audio blog these days. So, but you see what I mean? They're always complaining that people are under someone's control or under this or under that or, you know what I mean? They're, they're being sponsored by this one or that one when they're finally untethered. Oh, it bothers these hypocrites posing as Christians that they... They'll complain that someone's 501c3, let's say, or they'll complain that someone's under someone else's control or someone else's money or that I sent you money, I want you to speak in Hebrew or whatever it is. And then when you're free, oh boy, now you're just a blowhard. You're just a carnal guy. You say nothing. So they're gatekeepers. They're not brethren. They're just... They're just watchdogs for the enemy, and they think they're something, but they're not. I saw that. I was amazed when I saw that. You know, I always knew there was something wrong with certain people. You know, it's like, no, if you, yeah, if you're taking donations, then you're at fault, and if you're not taking them, you're at fault. If you're uh, un under the auspices of a church or something, and that's your podcast, then you're being controlled by them. But if you're just free with your own blog, it's like, well, what, what do I say that bothers you so much? I had to make that aside. 
The Lord says in Zephaniah 1, I will utterly consume all things from the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven, the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the uh, Chemerims with the priests. And then that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops and them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malcolm and them that are turned back from the Lord and those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed in strange apparel. The Lord will take down, yeah, what, Catholics? Um, well, that's pretty strange apparel, if you ask me. Uh, but the point, the point here is, is that the Lord will destroy that which he, which he blessed. He will, he will uh, do this with Israel. This is Zephaniah speaking to, to uh, prophesying of the, of the great day of the Lord to come, which was believed by uh, the Jews. And um, I will utterly consume all things from off the land. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men. That bring a bell? Because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. Okay, let's let the prophet speak. You know, absolutely. And the parallel today is this is the same situation we're facing. So I would expect that this word, which I could see someone getting arrested for saying something like that, can you? Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of them that dwell in the land. A speedy riddance means they're all dead. This is a prophecy which is yet to come due, said by Zephaniah. A prophecy yet to come due and now being uttered here. This is, I believe, a prophecy about what you're seeing. Please do not lament the further disintegration of the situation, but know this. Let me give you a word of comfort. Let me give you a word of comfort. The, the, the people implementing all this, their own will die and they will go down with the ship as well. You, the witnesses, will see that. You'll see that, yes, the Lord didn't spare. You know, yes, the good people got hurt, yes, but then the bad people that are perpetrating this evil, they also went down by their own hand. We had predicted here, we, that is me, myself, I, and the Lord and whatnot, and this process, predicted that um, before anyone else. I have, to, I have to, you know, I don't often do that, but in this case, I feel I have to. Before anyone else, about the trouble of Obama, the troubles of the President of the United States. The, the, his troubles are really not what you see on TV uh, which they're all being you know, defensive about and saying they're having a great time. They love, they, there's no such thing as scandal. Everything is groovy. You know, they're all in that phase. Like children, they're, they're just like high school kids at this point. It's embarrassing to watch, but the point I'm trying to make is the internal war that spills out, that's going on between, uh, that's going on internationally, which is, the, which is a metaphorical kind of, uh, you know, it's a, it's an aspect of the spiritual battle, okay? It's an aspect of the spiritual battle. Now, this thing that's going on is insane. This war is about to break out, or if you like, 
the devil about to be thrown down onto the land. Meaning the secret war comes out into the open. And um, they, the perpetrators of this war, <laughs> will lose, <laughs> have lost, because it's all them fighting with them, them on them, them on them. And sure, there's a lot of, a lot of people die, of course. The Lord will consume all out of the land. His remnant he will take to himself, but you know, and, and you're, you're there to be a witness. 10,000 to the left, 10,000 to the right. They're, they're doing everything they can with all the poisoning and the GMO, everything they can to kill you anyway, to bring plague and to, do, to escalate the cancers and escalate all of those things. It's just pure evil. So they're doing all those things, and you were the witness. Yes? What other purpose would you have here then? Right. We're wit- In other words, we're here to do the Lord's work. We, you, you're with the Lord and, and because you're witnesses of it and you can testify of these things and that will uh, cause other people as well to wake up and the Lord pulls in those to himself. But there's nothing else going on here. This is the gathering of the Lord and, and the Lord is, is you know preparing his harvest in his harvest time and the, the angels will reap, and death is, is uh, you know, the final arbiter, and decisions are made, the judgment of the quick and the dead, and the dividing up of the kingdom, who's in, who's out, who's in, who's, who's out, who's not. And all of that is going on. The dividing of sheep and goats, there used to be like a, a recruiting of the sheep and a recruiting of the goats and all that, but those recruiting days are over. Now it's just is you are either sheep or goat there is no recruiting anymore um, there will be plenty you know perhaps the 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 the, the disobedient church that uh, that jumped into uh, the worship of the state in the name of Jesus and it got all confused and now they're being thrown under the bus maybe that will is there to wake the the, the remnant up that are in those buildings or mausoleums they call churches but uh, that would be the only purpose of it. It wouldn't be to revive the building or the steeple or the obelisk or the gargoyles or the stained glass or the costumes or the masquerade or the masks. It's not about that. The Lord is going to gather his own unto himself and everything else is going to be burned by fire, period. And those who serve the devil will burn. By their own hand, well, they 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 per, pro, persecute the uh, peaceful Christians who would never ra- raise an, uh, an arm to them, who would pay their taxes, who would give them their due, who would be peaceful, who will follow their laws, and yet they're they're the evil ones, according to Janet Nepal, whatever her name is. Ah. Uh, yeah. Just think about that. that. Persecution in America. Peaceful Christians being labeled as terror threats. Radical Islamic uh, terrorists are, are considered freedom fighters by this government. Ha 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 ha! A total 100% reversal of normal. It's a gift. It's so bad, and, and it shows you where they are. They, they uh, the force of the, the destroyers, uh, who serve the devil, who intone God when it's convenient, will label tax-paying Christians who mean no harm to anyone as the enemy. They don't mean me. They're talking to the 501c3 people. That they're the enemy now, which I hope, they will deny every application 501c3 status. I hope they deny it all because the Lord has no business with 501c3. None. So when we're being outraged about this, think what you're being outraged about. You're outraged that the IRS goes after 501c3 applicants? To me, that's a gift. They should deny them all. 
The Lord has no business with 501c3 or 4 or any of it. The Lord does not need to take, take anything from the state. Does not need to, 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 to be given a gift by the state of a tax exempt. Tax exempt is just a ruse. It's a contract with the state that you will not speak about politics. That you will let us in on what you pray about. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an avenue in to disrupting it because they don't understand it. Look, they ne- look I, I've talked to them. They don't understand if you show up and you try to talk to them about anything on earth and all things go back to the Lord. You know, we know where everything comes from. When you start bringing that up, it, they just absolutely either go into a rage or they completely disconnect from you and will never speak to you again because they can't understand that. All they know is fight, get the enemy, fight, military. It's reptilian. Their souls belong to reptiles. They are scalped. They are hive mind. They are collective. They're not human anymore, whatever human was. They're Ruth, they're the... They're the um, the, the guards that tortured Wormbrand. They're the same people that would take uh, uh, their prisoners out on a, on a below freezing day and hose them down with water till they turned into, uh, till they died standing up as, as stiff from being frozen to freeze them to death or whatever other torture they would, they would, they would just simply torture people because they liked it. They kill people because they like it. All they know is mano a mano fighting. They don't know what it would be like. You know, you know they, 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 they have their soiree at the, the Marie Antoinette White House of the panty waists and the ballas ones. And they sit there with their Justin Timberlakes, another you know, guy that was snipped, and along with everything else. And they sit there with all these suck-ups who are playing their little concerts and they go, mm-hmm, that's really good. Look what we're doing. We're having a concert while everybody else thinks we're in a scandal. And they play this game that's, that's akin to high school. And you take it seriously rather than looking at it all as just one big gift. You being a witness is a gift to yourself. The Lord made you a witness. He wants you to report back to him and to testify to others of how the Lord is moving around in all this. The Lord is not absent from any of this. He's, might I say it? He's the prime mover in all this. He's bringing this civilization down. And you're watching it. And you know what? There's nothing new under the sun. This is not the first time this has happened. Uh, But this is the pattern. When people disobey the Lord, they are going to be um, let's just go to disobedience 101. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. A lie. And then, for God doth know the day that you eat thereof, and your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree that uh, to be desired uh, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and they did eat, i.e., they were both initiated into Satanism 101. Oh, how could Eve, the mother of all living, be a Satanist? Well, I, you know, call them prodigals. They, they lost their way there. What they were designed to do that. They didn't have, you know, if they didn't have a weakness in them, they would never eat eaten of the tree. God made them to eat of the tree because without that, we wouldn't have this whole story. Without the whole story, then God wouldn't have from Genesis to Revelation. It, it you know, he will... Um, you know, he, he was and is and, and is to come. He's in all things and yet he stands outside time and he created this story. 
oh no, God can't be any part of sin. He, well, I'm not saying it's part of sin, I'm just saying he made them. Had, if it was your logic, he would have, this is why I quit church. This is why I dropped out. You never, right, we went back to, you never explained that right. If God's omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, and, and everything, and, and is the Almighty, then he could have made Adam and Eve to not uh, fall prey to the serpent. Knowing, of course, that that could be a danger, and he could make it so the serpent never showed up there. You know, made it so they wouldn't fail the test. It was, it's not their fault at all that they were, you know, well, then it's not the murderer's fault. It's not the sinner's fault. No, no, fault and blame don't do any good right here. The fact of the matter is, this is like an allegorical way of explaining how man is weak and fell to this, this, you know, and wanted to be as gods, knowing good and evil. Wanted that occult knowledge. Wanted to be, um, you know, wanted to be their eyes opened, wanted to be awakened. The whole Luciferic initiation that goes on on earth, from the rock and roll, the evangels, uh, to everywhere else, you know, to the coach and the, the team, getting in on the team, to the thugs in Chicago getting in the uh, mafia, whatever. All the world is one big initiation ritual. The whole world is. So they don't understand when they see people that are not conformed to the world or, you know, meaning people of faith because of you can't just be unconformed. You're either going to be conformed to the world or conformed to Christ or one of God's. You can't just be walking around as a human that serves no one. You have to serve one side or the other. And they can't understand that how people can belong to something. They just don't. It's like other. You know what the fight is all about? It's like two species. You see the insect species or... You see the horses fight. You see, you know, there's just, there's no explaining it. The two sides are going to fight. They're incompatible. A person of God is incompatible with a, a leftist commie thug. The, the one has to kill the other. Incompatible with Caesar. Caesar has to put them to death. Don't you? They, but they didn't do anything wrong. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. Why are we crucifying him? Because this bothers us. We have to find a way to crucify him because we don't want him around. Because this God thing frightens us. We have to kill it. So now we label them as terrorists, peaceful people that would never raise a hand to anyone in retaliation. If anything, they would be forgiving. And now they're the terrorists. And the Muslim extremists is now the freedom fighter patriot. It's so completely a lie. It's so completely obvious as to what reality is. I'm just explaining absolute reality of what we see on the ground. There is no other interpretation of it. It's just, you may not like the facts. You may draw another conclusion that they don't really belong to the devil. They're secularists. And I'm saying, oh, you've got to be kidding me. They all belong. And they've all been initiated. And they all have bowed down. And they all have done the thing. And they know damn well who butters their bread. And they don't talk about it because the, the devil's great trick is to not exist. So they say they're secular humanists or whatever. That's fine. They've all bowed down. No man walks around on this place on his own recognizance, not even one, no one, ever. Now you remember that. Remember that. No one has freedom of movement on the earth without belonging to someone, serving someone. They're just, you, you can lie about it all you want. I know for a fact. All those people that, uh, for example, uh, the whole Hollywood thing, okay? I don't know one person, I know quite a few people in, in my time. 
I don't know one that wasn't initiated formally into Satanism. Especially the Christians. I know. That's my point. But the, the thing is, is they just, they wanted to be playing with the toys. They wanted to be in the big room. They wanted to be where, where the movie or the music or the whatever was getting made. You know, these people bow down to the Beatles, you know? The Beatles were just a psyop. It's just, it goes on and on. Oh, I agree the music was good, and I agree that, you know, they're great musicians, and they've given their whole lives and souls to this machine. I, I'm sorry, but don't make it my problem to point out what is. If I say what is, why can't I say what is there? If, if you know, just happens to be, the, oh, but if you say that, Brother Z, you will not be welcome. I'm well aware of that. Um, I still, you know, I like, say, Glenn Beck. But when I get on there, he's talking about how great the job the churches are doing. Or Huckabee or any of these conservatives. And uh, then I realize, ah, we're not bros. I'm just uh, one of those really oddballs, you know. I just... I just see what is and Glenn doesn't. I see what is and Rush doesn't. I see what is and nobody does. <laughs> I see what is and you all do. And I mean no, and I absolutely, I, I, I so mean people no harm. No political harm. I'm just here observing. I don't even feel like I, uh, I'm just here as a visitor. I really am. I'm not uh, really a part of, of this situation. I, I wouldn't want to be having seen what I've seen and knowing what I know. I wouldn't want to be a part of this situation. My civilization is the kingdom of God. I do music because music is uh, my way to the spirit. It's all about getting in there. And yes, some of it, they go, well, that sounds satanic, that music. You wouldn't know what satanic is, man. Satanic can be a nice, sweet folk song. Satanic can be singing Amazing Grace. I, you know, I, your problem is you don't seem to, to be alive in the spirit. You're dead in the spirit, but you're alive to your senses, and your senses are telling you, oh, that grating sound over there, that guitar, that must be of the devil. And this over here, that must be good, that beautiful chorus singing to God. And you can't discern between the two. One could be glorifying the Lord, the loud sound. And the other may be glorifying the devil, the beautiful praise music. I don't know why it's that way, but um, it's supernatural. And what I need to do is find a... a I need to find a certain thing. Hey, what happened? Okay. Uh, let's see now. I'm searching for something in my... Oh, okay. Uh, let me see if I can find that one. So, it works every time. Psalm 33. Psalm 33, 3, 3, 3, 3, okay? Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Got any metal people out there? There you go. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the, with the um, you know, there were some songs that were okay, the, the so-called British invasion. Look, all these guys who were involved in all that, they were all trying to, have their cake and eat it too, you know, have the music and play and like people and have concerts and, you know, be a part of things and at the same time not lose their souls. I understand that. But no man can make it on his own power. It's very confusing and it's very hard to find your place in all this. You know, 
and we're struggling. And by the way, um, you people need to buy these Sword and Dove records, and, and I'm, I'm going to move them to CD Baby, but you have to buy them because um, we're making a go of it, and uh, so we're going to be... The thing is, this is still like a pre-release. This is music under the Lord that is really for the Lord by people who really were there that are not part of Babylon. I mean, it really is a thing like that. It's something that shouldn't even be. And since I don't take donations, but I do expect you to buy the CDs, they're not really related to what I'm saying here. And this, I don't even call it ministry. You call it, you call it what you want. I'm not calling it prophecy. You call it what you want. But that is a, that's a, it's a great you know, beginning of the Sword and Dove trek. And uh, it's something that every library of every, every serious believer should have that record. Twelve ninety nine for a CD? You got to be kidding me! And you get to see my mug in there, and Kelly wrote some cool stuff in there, and it's just a, it's a great studio project, and it's um, got it had some help from uh, from a Grammy uh, winning uh, producer who woke up and left Hollywood, and and he helped out on the mixing, and so there's there's been some heavy hitters in there. There's been some heavy hands in that thing. You have to buy it. I mean, it's, you know, it's either that or I won't talk to you anymore. If you want me around, then, then there has to be some kind of, it can't be a one-way thing. You know, I expect so little of you. And that's one thing I do expect. Uh, it's either that or you're just, or you're dead from the waist down, you know, to, to say a, euphemistically. It, it just means you're dead from the waist I mean, you know, if if that doesn't awaken your spirit, then you're you're just dead. If okay, well then get the CD in order to awaken yourself. Now I admit there's been a problem with the distribution with people. They order and the and the thing the people don't deliver. I've been waiting for about twenty CDs for a while, so we're going to fix that. Okay, but I'm mentioning it today. We're going to fix that uh, when I return. And you'll be able to get it from CD Baby, I think. Uh, not, the, not the... You'll be able to either download it or, or get it from a, a website there. We need to... Uh, um, the digital distribution, it's in iTunes and Amazon and all those places. It's out there already. But as far as... Uh, and we are also going to offer, I think, at some point, a, uh, a thumb drive version. But all this is going to be organized, and you'll see a lot more uh, organization, a lot more uh, recordings, and a lot more um, a lot more artists and and uh, various people that we will be working with and bringing you. You know, I, what I realize is what the Lord is telling me. I said, I need to have my own industry of music. That means you know, radio, um, CDs. You know, every, the the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, because. Um, we realize that by dealing with real people, the world, you know, the Christian world will, will shun it. Yes, the Christian world will shun it. So, you know, uh, you investors that want uh, to be in any kind of partnership buying up radio stations, let me know. I'm going to have the, these records spinning 24 hours a day. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but the Lord told me that's what's, good, that's what's up. So I believe him. Absolutely. You, you flip your car radio on and to the Christian station and it's actually playing an actual song. Not some glossy, glitzy, sort of poppy-sounding piece of crap. Oh, no, I mean, look. The sheen is great. The mixing's great. The, the studio guys are great. Everybody's great, but there's something wrong. Yeah, I want real... I'd rather hear mistakes. I'd rather hear flaws. I'd rather that... That, that picking on the guitar, it wasn't perfect. You don't even know what I'm talking about. But you can't talk to me without, without you know, dealing with, with uh, that aspect. And so that aspect is coming away. But you can download it now. It's out there. So go download it. Share it. I shouldn't have to say it. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to. Same thing with Lamb. People say, well, what about your book? It's like, well, I don't promote it, you know. It's, 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 ask anyone, they'll tell you it's a really good read. But And then you say that you're out there all on your own and you don't have any help and there's 
you know, I provided stuff, the book, that, the podcasts are free. I mean, I think you might complain too much about your life and feel sorry for yourself when there's people doing things to try to reach you and help you. Uh, you know, any kind of thing I do in music, is, it's either that or it's fire. I give you the fire of rebellion. You know, because everything I do is against Babylon. <laughs> so yeah, anything I've done, and I've given a lot of free tracks to you, so blast them in your cars. Change the mood in the room. I also do frequency music that will literally change the reality of your life. But I can't say that because, you know what I mean? It sounds like I'm a new age kook then. So you just have to do... All these things you must discover. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people to none effect. The Lord destroys that which is not his, that which rebels against him, that which is heathen, he brings to naught. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven and beholds the sons of men. We're in Psalm 33 here, so look it up. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike and considereth their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any of his by great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. What's famine? GMO. What's famine? Uh, the, the weather modification drought. What's famine? Uh, also poisoning from the sky. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, and he is our help and our shield. That means from all the things you're upset about right now. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according to as we hope in thee. And this is meant to be sung. I think I would like to put this to music because it says, sing unto him a new song and play skillfully with a loud noise. That's exactly what we try to do. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to tie it up all together. The Lord destroys that which he, um, which he has also loved. You know. The Lord destroys that which he has also cherished. The Lord destroys that which he is. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go over here. We're, good. We're just riffing through the Bible here because we really need to establish this, um, this word. Okay? So, basically, uh, how come I'm... Okay, now I'm kind of... Now my iPad version is, is giving me trouble. Okay. Um, there we go. And then five. Thank you. There it is. The day cometh and shall burn like an oven and all the proud, yea. And uh, we're really in the end time. We're really in the day of the Lord kind of chapters here. Uh, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth and shall grow up as calves of the stall. Okay, so there's that divide. There are the witnesses of the Lord here to witness this destruction of the civilization of which they will never build their utopia ever, will never, ever. Oh, it may look like they have it for a while, but no, no. The Lord will never allow it. He will never allow it. The Lord, again, to tie the theme up of this talk today, he destroys that which he makes. He destroys, for disobedience, people whom he once saved, he destroys. He destroys the heathen. 
especially those who know the Lord's word, but because they want to belong to something, join the other side. He will destroy that. Well, he'll cause, how will he do it? Lightning bolts from heaven? No, he'll cause them to be paranoid of each other. He'll cause confusion amongst them. They will attack one another. It'll be like the internal war of the U.S. government, and they won't be able to to have any peace because they're attacking themselves from within. And then their great leader, Barry, the con man, will, you know, the Saudi guy, the actor, he will uh, pretend to be president or whatever he thinks he is. I guess they are. You know, he, they are kings and queens, really. They see themselves as kings and queens, not presidents elect, and certainly don't care anything about the people. They're more like the evil despot king. But um, anyway, as we watch the implosion, the internal fighting brings them down. We're witnessing the, the, the fall, in a sense, of Western civilization because Europe is about to go. The, you, you've all talked about the planned financial collapse, and on that day they're going to have all the, the the vehicles and the army and everyone are, you know checking everybody out, going door to door to make sure your mind isn't thinking about God. Is your mind thinking about God? Do you, why? Because people that think about God, their eyes are open to all the stuff they say. Now, don't look at the man behind the curtain. Don't look at those cameras on the thing. What's wrong? Do you not trust the? Are you feeling okay? Maybe you need some Prozac. You know, oh, oh, I'm sorry, that made you suicidal. Oh, well, you know, uh, it's another, another strike for me. It's in my sacrifice. I get credit. Aha, I got a pop. Yay. You know, if you're sick of that, I guess there's somebody that's out there that's sick of that who's been in it. You've got to repent and come out. I can't even believe you're there. How can you stand it? The goodness of the Lord is the only thing that gets me through. It's, it's his word and, and knowing he's there in the middle of the night, two in the morning. Who am I going to call? I call on him. They say, well, you're a recluse. I say, no, I'm not a recluse. I'm, I, I have satisfied. I don't need to call um, friend A, B, or C and talk about what's disturbing me unless we want to call and pray together. Because I've got my way. That's a pretty cool thing to have, to be satisfied that, you know what, at long last I can go to the Father. I don't know, my friends, what I would do without my faith and without a place to go. And it's very, you know, disconcerting to have Christians angry at you. You know, I've been persecuted by Christians. Let me just, people that, yeah, I know. But I have actually been persecuted over the years by Christians. (laughs) <laughs> so now they're, be, they're getting persecuted it's amazing how many people are suddenly not proclaiming their faith have you noticed they're just not doing they're just not you know wearing it on their sleeves anymore because of the change in the political climate hey God sees that you're failing the test you better you better wear it on your sleeve like I went back to my dream remember we began with the dream last night I had a dream I was before the judge and you know, that because I was, I was hauled into uh, jail because I was praying in the park with some people and, uh, and somebody reported it. As they're evil, the people that are standing and holding hands and praying over there under that tree. You know, you're not bothering anybody, but well, that's, but they've been trained to call in when you see some evil thing like that going on. And then the judge asked. And then I... You know, I basically was defending myself because I I don't need a lawyer to speak for me when we're talking about things like this. And I simply said, I am what I am. God, you know, made me. And God made you. And I I just, uh, he said, well, don't, you can't pray in public. You know, you, know, you have to, and well, if, if it happens, you know, I'm always in prayer, whether silently or with other people. But we're always You know, if you define prayer by talking to God, communicating with God, uh, then then it's a constant thing. It's not. It's like it's just like my arm. It's not separable. And then, well, we'll see how you feel after thirty days. (laughs) Thirty days in a hole. 
It's like, oh, well, I'll probably increase my faith. I, I don't know, you know, well, then we'll kill you. Oh, well, I'll increase my faith even more and other people. You see what I mean? It's just, it's a conundrum that they can't escape. You are absolutely, I'm thinking of one young man right now out there. One young man who has his parents and, you know, they have their expectations and they're kind of connected and, Look, it's just not going to be easy. You can't go back to the way, you know, to being blind. And they're not going to accept you. So, you know, this is, it, the, nothing is going to come to an equilibrium rest here. The Lord's going to move. And he's going to, you know, a lot of people who are blind will see as events unfold and chaos ensues. Now, remember also, that a lot of the chaos that you're going to see is planned chaos. They're planning on chaos. That they will then emerge order from, and they also have the order ready to go, just like they got the Supreme Court justices who are leftist, uh, you know, shills, who aren't even fit or qualified to be on the bench of any bench anywhere. Just criminal thugs giving criminals cover. They're ready to go. According to Valerie Jarrett, they're ready to go. And they're going to put the screws to you Christians. <laughs> we'll finally get our payback. And what did they do? Well, it was Jesus. He did it. That's why we're never going to forgive Mel Gibson ever. Never forgive Mel Gibson ever. Not after that. We just had to put a plant there at that uh, little trophy wife. And she brought him down. And now we were just looking for an excuse to reject him so we wouldn't have to deal with him again. We were always looking for that excuse. He, he, he made The Patriot, he made Braveheart, then he made the Jesus movie. Those three movies are unforgivable. Unforgivable. Well, where do I get my testicles snipped off? That's what I want to know. Is there a place where I can go to get my balls removed from my... Um, and Because that's the only way I'm going to really fit in. Okay. With that, I've, I've got, I've, I'm going to leave you uh, with this idea about the horses. So I saw freedom with the horses. They're wandering around and, and they're eating and, you know, they're having babies and they, they're completely indifferent to people because they're free. You know, people might not like that. I want you to pay attention to me when I'm talking. I'm going to make you. I'm going to break you. So you serve me. You can't be wandering around with no consciousness about me. I'm, I'm important, you see. I have power. I could break you. Then you'll acknowledge me. I'm going to break you off that Yahweh thing. 30 days in the hole. Then after that, then maybe you're going to give me the respect. You're going to bow down by God. You mean bow down to all your little cameras and devices and uh, your transgenics, you know, how you want to become part cyborg because you're the stupidest thing that ever crawled out of uh, biology? It's almost like, you know, birds have a collective consciousness. So if you get a flock of birds that you know, fly together, the, 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 the collective gray matter of their brain, each one bird may not be that smart, but the whole collection of those brains wired together um, is, is huge. Um, may I say it? Whoever will be the cyborg, and I, I have no doubt cyborgs exist and clones exist and it all exists for, for, for years now, for centuries and, and forever. But here's the thing. They're never going to have a soul. Well, even the concept of containers that contain souls is just an illusion. Oh, I know they trade them. It's just an illusion. What I'm trying to say, and I'll conclude with this, is that there is no power other than the Lord's power. They have no power. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world, according to God's word. I'm here, 
as a witness to what the world's... I don't need to get emotionally involved. I predict that the government of the United States and Europe and wherever else there are governments and whatever they're doing are all going to be in internal wars and collapse. You could call that World War III if you like, but they're all going to, there will be no order out of chaos. There will be great death and destruction and horrors, but at least by then they'll stop it with the chemtrails already because they'll need the planes for something else. Just before death, we see a beautiful array of sunflowers. We used to have sunflowers in New Mexico before they started putting the drought in there with the uh, planes. The Lord told me not to worry about it. He allows the earth to be hurt. He makes beautiful things and then he crushes them. You got to get into the rhythm. Oh, there's a rhyme and a reason. It's, 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 he doesn't break things and hurt things when there's obedience and fidelity and love. No. It's when there's hatred and rebellion and perversion and and immorality, and a, the thing he hates the most is this callousness toward the children. This callousness toward hurting people, like the, the way the Benghazi thing was with, the, with, the, with, with, with this callousness about the people dying. Like, ah, who cares? It's just, you know, just four guys dying. No big deal. It's this cheapening of life. So he'll say, okay, you want to see it cheap? How about I'll make it worth not even one cent? So that the perpetrators will think they're getting away with it when actually they're cutting their own throat. And that's, you know, and you, there's, there's no uh, fixing stupid. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the stupidest people in our society have degrees from Harvard. You know, what are you, you going to do? The stupidest amongst us have the highest degrees. And they're not only intellectually... Uh, um, challenged. They actually don't have um, their IQs have actually gone backwards. They've actually become dumber as they have uh, uh, acceded to power. They become dumber as they've gone up the ranks in uh, in the government, because you know, or the corporation, or wherever it is, or the golf course. Um, they become dumber because the, in the interrelating, the other you know, processes that a brain would have to go through of being an individual when it's given to the collective that actually lowers a person's IQ to the fact of being stupid so that they can be controlled. You know, and they allow it to happen because they like the perks. When they realized the perks for it were about destroying civilization and humanity, including their own, then they go, oh my God, what have I done? And then that's about it for them. We try to prevent them from that sort of thing. We try to be a voice of reason. But they're unreasonable because they're, you know, intellectually challenged. Again, it goes back to when you become the hive mind and the collective, your IQ goes down at least 50 points right there. So if they had a genius 150 IQ on their SATs or whatever, by the time they're in the collective, it's down to about 100. Which is still fine. You can function with 100 IQ, no problem. But if it was any higher than that, they would be inventing solutions, which, and they would be doing critical thinking, which is absolutely forbidden among the hive mind collective and the collectivist. Free thinking and, and critical thinking is absolutely forbidden. Propaganda and the uh, and accessing lies is truth, and the ability to allow the thing that's in you come out, meaning the uh, demonic presence that has taken over, to really be the one living and, and of course, give, them, give a backseat to the person that was there. I don't recognize my husband, she says. <laughs> he now runs everything, but I, I don't know who this man is. Remember that? And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you, I'm praying for you, and, I, and honestly, I'm, I know I sound... Uh, I know how it sounds. In, in my mocking tone. Uh, but that's the only way I could say it. Because, I mean, do you think God takes this seriously? Really? You know, I mean, like they're a threat? See you next time.